Hey, what's up guys, it's Mario back again with another trade video. Now, what I'm gonna go over today, guys, I am gonna go over Tesla. I did trade Tesla stock today. Uh, Tesla announced a $5 billion offering, and what that does, it allows Tesla to sell stock at the current market price to raise money for, uh, for the company. Now, $5 billion is actually really not a, a huge amount. It's actually less than 1% dilution. Uh, so even though usually the offerings are a bad news to the overall stock, uh, a 1% dilution is really not a big deal. So today coming into the, to the market, uh, when I was looking to trade a stock, I was actually, um, you know, kind of unbiased. I wasn't sure how the stock was going to move. Because of yesterday's move, we had a huge move. I was actually long biased, so I was actually looking to, to buy a dips, any pullbacks. Uh, but because of the news, the offering, I kind of changed my bias. So I did end up shorting Tesla, and I'm going to go over that trade and kind of explain everything about that trade today. I also did trade uh, Virgin Galactic on the long side. I did go long, and I also shorted Splunk, uh, another uh, company. So I'm going to go over those trades today, and I'm going to explain everything about them, the daily chart, intraday, even the news, and kind of cover why the news is very, very important. Uh, so hey, I, now again, guys, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel. Let me uh, share my video and uh, my screen, and let's get started. All right. Okay, so let's see what's happening with Tesla. Now, Tesla has been in an insane bull run uh, the last couple of days, actually two weeks. I actually shorted on this day, uh, but I, I am still bullish on the whole company as a whole. I, have, I am a long-term investor, been invested in Tesla for three years. And today I actually decided to day trade it. There was a great opportunity, a high probability trade to day trade today. The reason why is because it broke above the 600 level after this consolidation. Uh, so to me, this, this is what I call a high top type of breakout and it broke out under a huge volume. So I was actually coming in, I was actually uh, long bias. I wanted to buy any dips on, uh, on the, um, what do you call it? The, uh, midpoint which is here around uh, 631 uh, and maybe even s1 here at around 613 but uh, before the market opened tesla made a huge announcement hey we're gonna um have a five billion dollar offering at the market offering meaning they, they're gonna sell stock into the current market price of tesla to raise money for the company for its expansion which personally as an investor i think is a great thing uh, especially since uh, it's less than 1% dilution. Uh, right now, Tesla stock is worth, is valued over $6 billion. So a $5 billion, uh, you know, offering is really not a big deal in the, in, the, in the grand scheme of things. Now, usually offerings are a negative uh, news event uh, on a company, especially if there are, if there's huge dilution of like 5 or 10% or more. But in this case, it wasn't. But because of the news, I wasn't really sure how I was going to trade stock uh, Tesla today. I was kind of long biased coming into the market, but after the news, I became neutral. I wanted to kind of see how Tesla reacted at the open and wanted to see if it was going to hold those levels or it was going to, it was going to kind of trend and break to new highs. Now, because of the offering, that means that uh, Tesla, the company, could actually sell into, into any of those, 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 uh, those kind of, those, those pullbacks or those pushes. So I was really wide aware of that. And I was hoping that if, uh, you know, hopefully in the morning, those, the, they'd sell the, all the $5 billion worth of stock and the company in the, I guess the, the stock recuperates and it kind of starts trending. But looking at the intraday chart, that did not happen. And I'm gonna kind of explain to you what exactly happened. Um, so pre-market, here's when they announced it. Exactly at this time, you see this huge sell off. Uh, but it kind of bounces here. And again, I was neutral coming in. I wasn't really sure how this was going to move. So again, I kind of did not put any orders. I wanted to kind of wait a couple minutes, maybe half an hour to see how it reacted. Uh, we did have a strong bounce of the 620 level. And we kind of hit the 630, 636.50 level, pulled back below the, the value one average price. is a purple line right here. It bounced back again. And then they kind of start selling people again below the, the volume weighted average price. Now, at this point, when it broke below the VWAP, the volume weighted average price, I became short bias. And the reason why is because to me, this is kind of like a fail momentum uh, type of move. 
uh, I call it a fail follow through momentum. And to me, it was like, okay, so if it's going back below the VWAP, that means there's not enough momentum, not enough buyers coming in to buy those prices. Again, I also back in my mind, I understand that Tesla could sell $5 billion worth of stock at any moment in which could put prices, put, push prices down even more. So those, those two things, uh, you know, coupled with the, with the price action were the reasons why I decided to kind of short. So I did short, I had my stop uh, at all time highs and I was looking for a move to 620. Now it did kind of consolidate. It started to kind of consolidate right here at these levels and the consolidation looked pretty, pretty, uh, you know, looked like the dips were getting bought off. So I was actually at this point when it, when it kind of uh, reclaimed the VWAP, I was dude, I was thinking to myself, this may break out and squeeze out some shorts that could be possible. So at that point, if it, uh, my thought process, if it breaks 634, I may actually go long. I may cover and go long. Uh, so I had actually, it did have an order at 634. And again, the reason why it has, is because I was neutral, I was neutral in the stock. I was not either long or short. I wanted the price actually to tell me what to do. Uh, so I did have an order at 634. If it, if it were to break on high volume, you know, I was going to take that trade and kind of do like a, a red or green type of move now, but it did it. It held and it started to kind of, you know, trend down. So at this point, when it kind of went below again, the VWAP, I was thinking, you know what, if it breaks below this low, I'm going to add, this is a confirmation to me, this is going to go down. So I did add when it broke below the 20, uh, 627 level, I cover at this uh, um, uh, uh, pre-market level, 624, covered half, and I was actually, my target was 620. So I did have my target to sell the last, uh, the last uh, share at the 620, but it actually pulled back. So I did uh, kind of uh, raise my stop to break even on the, on the last shares, and it stopped me out. So I did make money on this trade. I was profitable in this trade, uh, but actually, uh, you know, just looking at that move, you could just kind of tell that there's a lot of volatility in the stock. Uh, eventually, you know, it, of course, it tested the VWAP again, and it kind of pulled back. It never got quite to, to 620, you know, and I only trade the first uh, hour of the, of the trading day. Uh, so I was out after I got stopped out, or, excuse me, after I got stopped out um, here. But if you guys can see, it ended up bit trending down, but then it reversed. So I almost feel like Tesla most likely sold a $5 billion worth of uh, stock all in this move right here, because after it, after it uh, kind of reclaimed the 624, check this out. Nice little trend right here. Nice little, little trend right here. And actually it's already went green again. And this is the uh, previous close. So in green. So again, when these type of news events happen, uh, you know, especially on a stock like Tesla, you know, you have to be careful of what your biases are. And I've been burned before. I actually lost money on Tesla on the first announcement that uh, they were going to join the S&P 500. I was actually long buys and the stock just kept selling and I got burned. So because of that experience and actually other experiences similar to that, I learned, that especially when there's news like that, you have to wait to see how the price action reacts before you make a trade. You know, and, and for me, I wanted to seek some, some sort of confirmation. Uh, I wanted to see more uh, information, that especially the price I can tell me what to do. So in this case, I did end up shorting uh, during the first hour of the trading day. I took my profits. I got stopped on the second half, but I was green. I was happy with that. Um, and again, look at that. Now Tesla moving and, and breaking out and actually uh, going green. So that just kind of goes to show you uh, the volatility of, of Tesla. So that was pretty much it with Tesla, guys. Um, you know, the next trade that I want to cover is uh, Virgin Galactic. Um, if you really look at the, the chart, it looks very, very similar in, in terms of the daily chart to a Tesla. Again, same reason why I wanted to go along on Virgin Galactic was because of a similar price action, you know, broke to new highs after this consolidation on a huge volume. And I was looking for the low hanging fruit, the second day continuation move. So on the, um, on the daily, I, of course, my midpoint is the first place I want to kind of open a position. Um, and I also had some at uh, the S1 pivot level, and I wanted to kind of see like a little consolidation and a move. 
Uh, and that's pretty much exactly what happened here uh, with, uh, with Virgin Galactic. So I was kind of very happy with the price section with uh, Virgin Galactic. Uh, it was really not that difficult in terms of a trade. It was very, very simple type of trade. Uh, buy at the midpoint and sell at the push. So there was a first push to uh, 33, uh, entry to uh, resistance level. And I wanted it, I wanted it, I was hoping that it was gonna break right away and we get the move to uh, red or green. That was my, my thought process. It did test uh, 33. We had some huge volume there and I, I didn't really like the, the level two. So I took some hats, took some off, it went below the, the, the volume of your price and I was like, dude, I'm gonna get out from the rest and I took out the rest. Uh, now it did consolidate and make a, made a new high here intraday. But at that point, and again, I was already out. I was happy with the trade. It was an easy trade, so I, I was happy. So that was pretty much Virgin Galactic. Now, overall, the reason why Virgin Galactic made this move is because they are going to have their first launch in New Mexico on Friday, December 11th. Uh, that's going to be all over the news. I highly, highly recommend you guys to, to watch it on TV. And actually, let me uh, do some research on that. Uh, Virgin Galactic... Galactic test flight. There it is. And here's the news. Virgin Galactic. Yep, here it is. So that's the reason why I was up yesterday. 14% nine month high because of the, you know, of the Virgin Galactic news. So highly recommend you guys to, to see this um, live on TV on December 11th. Um, Virgin Galactic is, is going to be this, their first um, launch. I am a long-term investor. I have been buying and trading around the core on, on Virgin Galactic around the 17 area. So I am a long-term investor. I do believe in the company. Uh, similar to SpaceX, um, there are actually Virgin Galactic is also going to have a payload. So when they do launch, they're going to have a payload. So they're getting paid. It's part of a NASA, NASA program. So that's really, really good news. So highly recommend it. Now, moving into the next trade, uh, Splunk. Now, why did I decide to short Splunk? And the reason why it has to be because they had a really bad earnings report and it broke below this uh, 160 level on the daily chart. Now, it, on the day reported earnings, it, it, it didn't really have a really nice price action. It kind of, uh, it kind of had like a doji type of candle. And the reason why is because of the SSR and it's a low flow type of stock and there was an S, there's, there's an SSR type, it was an on SSR meaning short, short, short seller restriction mode because when a stock goes below 10%, it, it, the SSR short seller restriction mode is turned on, meaning the short sellers are not able to short on the bid, they have to wait until the ask. And that creates a, 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 an unbalance, unbalance in terms of the, how the price moves. So it, it kind of gives an advantage to longs, to people who are buying a dip uh, to kind of short squeeze a lot of short sellers. So there's an, a disadvantage for short, short sellers. So when it broke below 160 on the day of earnings report, it kind of squeezed above that. Um, and we didn't really see much after that. And even a day after that, so short seller restriction mode usually lasts for like uh, two days. Uh, so on the second day, again, the same thing. And now yesterday, uh, I, we finally saw the break below uh, 160 confirmation. And it was an all-day trender, all-day downtrender uh, below 160. So to me, that was a, a um, confirmation. Hey, second day move, low hanging fruit on the short side. I'm in. Let's do this. Uh, and, and like I usually say, midpoint is usually my first place I want to short. The mistake that I make at this one is that I decided to short in a midpoint after consolidation. That was my mistake. Uh, usually the best time to short in the midpoint is, is during the open. We had a huge, we usually get a huge spike and to this level and then it, and then it kind of fades around, down below that. So that was my mistake on that. I, I was actually focused on, on, uh, on, on Tesla during this, during this trade. So I did lose my focus and there was a consolidation and it hit my level uh, and it started to keep trending. I didn't like it, especially after consolidation It's above the value weighted average price. It's after uh, the first half hour of the day. So it didn't look so hot. So I decided to take it off. You know, I, I could have, if I could have done anything different, uh, I could have just avoided this, the, this, the stock, not short it, take off my, my, uh, my orders. Cause I already had orders since the pre-market, take off the orders, 
or change them to 158, you know, because if there was to be a spike, you know, usually those, those spikes get sold, especially at uh, intraday resistance levels uh, in, the, in the daily chart. And this 158 is based on this level right here. And we had a nice pullback. It would have been a nice pullback to the midpoint again, and I would have, should have covered here. But that didn't really happen, guys. I did took the loss, but I'm okay with that. I made decent money in Tesla today. I also made decent money in um, uh, Virgin Galactus, so I was pretty uh, happy with that. So overall, guys, you know, when it comes down to trading, uh, it's not just about the price action. It's more than that. Um, you have to understand what's happening in the news as well. That does give you an edge, understanding what the news is. Uh, so the daily, uh, the intraday, uh, the news, the market, there's so many things that affect the price of the stock. And kind of getting a glimpse of all that will help you and give you an edge and make you a better trader. So hope you guys learned something from, something from this video. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel. You guys will hear from me soon. Have a good one, guys. Take care.